Jake's live. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Jake West from Commerce Academy. I am joined by my lovely co-host, Melissa White. That's me. And my friends, Rod Looper. And I don't hey, want to say... Jake West oh, my God. Please. Stop White. it. That's me. Thank you. Friends, Rod Looper. What is happening? I don't want to say... There we go. Sorry, I had to open it in a different window. Okay, anyways. Hey, everybody. I'm Jake West of Commerce Academy. That was not very good of me. Anyways, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, Melissa White, uh, awesome. Ron Cooper, uh, a wonderful artist from Brazil. And uh, I don't want to say your first name wrong, so Melissa, please help me. Or you can just ask her face. What's your name? I'm the, I know how to. Say, I know how to spell it. I know everything about the name. Just say it out loud so I don't butcher it. Dorfis. You can call me D. Make okay, Dorfis. That's easy. Dorfis Jean of uh, Spirits <laughs> Destiny. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, just a quick announcement. We have a current giveaway, which is the ridiculous mega follower giveaway. Five hundred followers we just reached on Twitter. We're actually about to hit six. Uh, in like three days, so that that's pretty cool. Uh, we are giving away a signed copy of Killtopia, Dave Cook. Uh, this is actually the copy that Thomas Warren won, but since he lives in England, we just sent it to him. So thanks for that, Dave. Um, and then we have a copy of number one, White Ash. Uh, and then also we have all this sweet White Ash swag I took a bunch of pictures. Go find the post uh, on Twitter and Instagram. I'll also put them below in the description once this live show is over. Uh, and you will be able to win a number of these things. It's, it's split up into a, a couple of lots that everybody can win. And it's over April 6th. So just make sure you follow me on Twitter or Instagram and then like the post. That's all you have to do. Uh, then we have another comment. Creators Club, Wednesday, April 3rd, coming up with Dan Panosian and Liana Kagas, which I am super excited about, and they are awesome, and I'm ready to have them on the show. So that is going to be the 3rd of April, 12 p.m. PST. So be there, be square, and also ask us questions here. So uh, I'm going to hand it off to Melissa, and we'll get started. Um, so super exciting news. Uh, we're also doing WonderCon next week. So expect lots of wonderful posts about WonderCon um, and about the show. Um, and there we go. So thanks you guys so much for coming um, and hanging out with me. Uh, I wanted you guys introduce yourselves. So tell, us, tell us about yourselves. All right, ladies first, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um... My name is Dorothy Jean. I am a creator and writer from Miami, Florida. Uh, recently, two weeks ago, uh, Spirit's Destiny Kickstarter ended. And I'm um, currently working on a few other projects, collaborative projects. Um, I have a Kickstarter going on with Fauna. And um, what else? Um, Nia Kaler is my next um, official um comic book that I'm pl planning to come out with and I'm planning to work on erotica novels so I want to keep my creative juices flowing oh yeah oh yeah I saw the kickstarter for fauna looks really good and if anyone has not like backed it or like looked at it or done something to be involved like you guys are missing out it's a it's a beautiful comic and spirits destiny um successfully funded so congratulations thank you thank you I work, I work hard on that um I can't wait to have uh, issue three um, yeah. Kickstarter towards the end of the year. So I want to just keep writing because, you know, it's the first Haitian American superhero. So I know. My roots. So excited. And it, it looks really great. I cannot wait for my copy. Like, I Thank can't. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> so we um, also have Rod Looper, who is a comic. Yeah. Why don't you introduce yourself? Well, my name is Rod Looper. I work with. Uh, comics and art for more than 20 years so a long run i started with 18 uh, in an agency of art here in brazil so i drew star wars ghosts uh dungeon and dragons and a few others then mm -hmm. i leave the agency 
uh, to start my own comics here in Brazil. This 19. Uh, so I did a, a, a very good uh, series of comics, of superhero comics in Brazil. After that, I stay a little bit in comics, but I get tired of the process, a business process, to take care of uh, uh, publishing, money. And I was too young, I think. The business started to grow very fast mm -hmm. and big here in Brazil. And I was like 22 or 23. And I just wanted to draw. I don't want to take care of business. And this affects me a lot. So yeah. I get away. I get away from this business and I, I start to draw indie comics for the whole world. This was in the beginning of the internet. So I get in some gigs here and there. And, and after that, I get tired of comics and move to concept art. And then I start to make concepts for movies and video games. I receive a proposal to work in Australia. So I moved there with my wife and I stayed there in, for two years working inside a video game company. Mm -hmm. And I get back to Brazil, work a little, I think five years with concept art, but my main passion always was comic books, always tell stories. Mm -hmm. And then when it start like oh, yeah. Indiegogo, Kickstarter, uh, many indie companies showing up, I, I said, Oh, that that's the time to get back to comics because I have and video in YouTube, social medias. Then I start to make some sample pages again, preparing my portfolio and I get start to mm -hmm. to get some gigs of comics again. Uh, and then lately I did uh, I was invited to draw a graphic novel named Detective Dead that is yes. a campaign on Indiegogo and was very, very successful. You can actually still back it, I believe. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can and, still uh, link into the description already if you want to go look at it. Uh, it looks freaking incredible. So uh, I, I already bought a copy, so I'm probably going to give that away. Yeah, yeah so, thanks. I mean, that... I just buy one for me, too. But, you know, it's fine. Thank you. <laughs> and beside that, I, I draw another Indiegogo comics that was named Divine Factory, Divinity Factory on Kickstarter mm -hmm. and always all also get very succeed in this campaign. Because I, I don't I don't like to draw, I don't know you guys, but I live for of art. I don't have another job. I'm a freelance artist. So I like to have many projects at the same time. I get bored if I say if I stay in one comic. Or in one job, you know, I say, oh, I don't get drawing this anymore. My God, I need oh, to draw okay. another thing. Well, that's uh, so interesting because, you know, the process of, of working on comics, like, especially when you are, you know, when you've done it for a long time or, you, or even if you are just starting out and finding your groove is so difficult. Like, Dorfis, what's your process? Because you're working on three projects right now. My yeah. process, um, I don't write outlines. I just... Um, I'm in school for film, so when mm -hmm. I write my um, scripts, I write them like I, like they're a movie. And um, yeah. I plan to like move away from comics in the near future because like I know how to write film scripts, mm -hmm. and um, I'm learning how to write um, video game scripts. So it's like, so you know, I, I will always have a passion for writing for comics. And and yeah, I do get bored. Uh, I get bored real easily. Like I wrote. Um, the first the the first arc of Spirit's Destiny, and I, and I started working on Nia Kaler, and it's basically she's the inspiration of my best friend. So, uh, my first uh, lesbian um character superhero. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like I wanted to uh, keep pushing. Like I get like I, I I haven't wrote in like in a week. So it's like today I'm like yeah I need to start writing because I don't get that drive. Like I don't like that's why I don't like doing outlines. I like to just do things like mm -hmm. out in the ordinary. Like, I have another book that I'm writing for one of my Muslim characters that appears in issue two, Nora. And then I have another, um, mm -hmm. a Caucasian South African superhero. Mm -hmm. I'm also writing her at the same time. But I've also gave other writers the mm -hmm. opportunity to work with me because I want to elevate the same way they write. Because, you know, everybody's creativity mm -hmm. is yeah. different. Of course. So, um, Spirit's Destiny only had only female creators. Um, for that Kickstarter, and um, Nick Kale is almost the same, but I have a, a male editor, 
you mm-hmm. know, I said, let me give him a chance. And he, he did an awesome job. So <laughs> I, um, I'm very diverse. I don't care who I work with, but the, mm-hmm. the problem is, is dealing with me because I'm very passionate and um, I don't really get down on my artists. So I just, I, pr- I tend to just wait till they deliver, but if they take a long time, you know, I have artists that had took six months to give me two pages. So, oh my I god, get, six uh, months! Yeah. Professional, oh, man, I will it, kill I'm myself, like, man. Two yeah. pages in six months, no way. There's man, no my way. professionalism in comics is an important thing. You have to be because this is this is your job, right? So, being a professional means turning out work when it's due. Do you guys work with contracts? Do you set up contracts with your artists or with your writers and everything to establish a, a timeline, a page count, and price? For me, it depends if the project is, is, is short, like, I don't know, I want to draw 10 pages for me. Mm-hmm. It's a personal comic book. I don't, I trust in, uh, my contract is emails. I save all the emails, emails mm-hmm. in my contract. But if the project is very big, like 50 pages, 100 pages, then I get a contract. Yeah. I just signed a contract for a secret project in July. That'll be a graphic novel too. And uh-huh. this guy puts all like time frame to deliver the page, how many pages per week, everything. Yeah. This is good because force us because you know how artists are, right? Yeah. You know how you know how it is. Man. You say I, I will draw, and then you say, Nah, I think I will play some game for, mm-hmm. and then I will draw. <laughs> No, yeah. I will draw. Now, now I will draw. Now I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm not but, I will draw. But, but yeah. it, it, it kind, it kind of, um, you know, discourage other creators when artists like I'm not even gonna say artists, creators, because we all in the same bracket start playing with your project because like there was times I was like, man, I don't want to write comics no more. Like for issue one, I went through a lot of trials and tribulations. There's like three different artists on there, and I would never call the artist out because, you know, me and him have talked about this, and, you know, he's much more professional now, but it's like, you don't do that to people, like, especially people that's paying you, like, you don't just, you know, catch ghosts, but I've read stories where, you know, not even only artists, but writers would not pay their artists, so it's like, it discouraged, you know, creators yeah. overall, so we yeah. should, you know, be very respectful, even if you're like, oh, Man, I'm 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 gonna be short. You know, give me some time. You know, as long as com- communication is very important. Like yeah. I'm not gonna lie. For totally. Spirit's Destiny, the had... the number one the number one thing in any good relationship is communication. Yep, for sure. For sure. I learned that from Don the Dead the remake. <laughs> but but the... lessons from I... Don the Dead. <laughs> I totally agree. I think this is why I'm 20 years working this market because I tell every, if I get sick, email. Mm. Guy, I'm sick. I can't draw today. I will draw tomorrow. And tomorrow I deliver. You know, email is always your- delivery. Always. This is something that I learned from my father. He was <laughs> very professional. If he was sick, if it was whatever, he get up 5 a.m., go to work, Work, get back, seven app every single day, and then I watch this and say, "Damn, the guy is professional. He's a fighter, you know. Sick, if they don't have car to go to the work, he was walking there. You know what I mean? And this mm-hmm. got inside of me. Even with me working as a freelancer, I learned that. So I always deliver the work, and now I have three books, and I can't draw anymore. Only if I draw with two hands, because mm-hmm. I don't know what to do anymore." Mm-hmm. But it's fun. But I love I love to tell stories. That's why yeah. I like comic books more than than concept art. Get concept art get me bored again. Okay, because it's always yeah. figure from front, beside, back, front, beside, back, and you get bored in two years doing that to say, oh my god, I can draw. Are you sure anymore. you don't want the front, the side, and the back? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, just one more time with the front, the side, and the back, though. Yeah. Uh, in T pose? Yeah, I, I know you know what that means. <laughs> Professionalism in comics is a, is a huge thing, and especially too when you're when you're working with a large team. How uh-huh. do you get put together and work with your teams and collaborate between you know it going from script to art or to pencils and inks, and in, even sometimes separately inks, and then to the colors and then to the letter? Like, how do you guys work with your teams? 
Okay. Um, okay, right now, like for Nia Kaler, I had to assemble my own team. What I did, because I, I've been working closely, like Lori was my first issue for um, Spirit Destiny. So I already know how she ink. I'm very particular when it comes to art. I love good quality because I feel like somebody, somebody's going to be spending money on my book. I should be able to give them great quality of work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So what I did, I would, I tend would like send, um, I would look at people's pages and see if they're much uh, more diverse when it comes to writing. Mm -hmm. If they're not diverse and come to writing, I can't work with them because of the fact, because I have a diverse group of characters. Mm -hmm. So um, I would tend to look at their pencils and I'm like, oh, let me see how you draw a black person. Let me see how you draw a Muslim person because I need to see people to draw different features because we all have different features. Yeah. And then, um, I would look at inks. So inks, you know, it was a uh, complement the pencils. If it can't complement the pencils, then you know it's 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 pointless to work with that um, individual because I'm working with Julie. I found somebody that complement her pencils, which is Lori, and now I have to find somebody who colors. So I started searching. I found this woman named um Kate Colors. Mm -hmm. She the way she colors is like it's phenomenal. Like you know it's I, I have a certain way i want my colors i don't want it to be you know too much like to the fact i don't um when it when it prints it looks muddy because in my issue one and, I, and i'm calling myself out the artist that um colored my book when it prints out it looks muddy mm -hmm. so i'm very particular like i don't want to repeat the same mistake twice yeah, <laughs> yeah. this could be all right. This could be a mistake by coloring RGB and then printing C I M K. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you get the black ink, and then if every color makes mix and this muddy feeling, it's hard. It's hard. Yes, you it is because people see all of that. They people see yeah. all of that, and then when I yeah. see that, I'm like, yeah, yeah I need to clean up. And also letters, you know, you have to always make sure the letters are on point because, you know, it's telling the story. Yeah, I, I, I think it's very important letters too. I, I don't I don't like to read a comic book that the letter is too small or mm -hmm. it's too messy. I let it, I, I just look the art and that's it. I don't, I even lost uh, time. I, I really like it when they put uh, uniform uh, text bubbles with Helvetica in them. I really like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I, in issue two, I actually started putting Creole in it, so it had I had to put like the the little translation in the um for the letters. So um I had mm. to learn to do that from reading other people's books, like Roy. He got the EXO comic book with the Malika. So I read a lot of indie comics to actually help me, um, especially with dialogue, because I'm very bad at dialogue. Because if I speak the way I speak at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So what are in putting together your team, right? And and getting everything together, how do you guys communicate? Because uh, we were talking or, or um you guys were talking about this earlier that it's a it's a collaborative process and, and a lot of times international process. So how do you guys communicate across across the world, you know, across the land, the states? Facebook. The oceans would probably have been a bad because you know, land masses and afford the anyways whatever <laughs> yeah for me always uh important things i always prefer to send by email so every single day in the morning like have 30 minutes or 40 minutes of my day just emails for everyone emails inks colors uh, writers everyone now something that i like to change in the ink i send a do you have a app app there name it whatsapp Yep. yep, we use it in Brazil is phenomenal. Every single one have this, mm -hmm. so we send it and we make a group inside of of the mobile, like in WhatsApp. And then, mm -hmm. can you change this line? Can you make the color like this? Oh yes, then they make a print and send me a photo. It's very fast. You usually use uh, Skype, but now with WhatsApp is so much faster to communicate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in this in this new project, I I finally get all my friend talent friends in this book because it's not it's not so good you put only friends in your books because mm -hmm. your friend and then the guy 
lay, not deliver the page, and then you say, oh, my, this is my friend. I can I can get too rush in, in him. Oh. Yeah. Mm. You, I, I can't, I can't be like that. I need you to, have to be. You need to. Yeah, be. you have to be. You have to be. Yeah, I know that. I, and I have 20 years, and I didn't <laughs> learn that yet. I always say, ah, oh, no, the guy, the guy you deliver, the guy you deliver. And then one week passed, and oh my God, he still didn't deliver the page. Mm -hmm. And then I need to talk. I like to talk smoothly with the person. Man, I, I have a case like that. I, I put a very good friend in to ink some of short story and then mm -hmm. the same thing happened she took like eight months to deliver two pages and i say man yeah. yeah and i sent i sent messages to her and said you lose the job the writer is getting furious you lose the job yeah do the pages two pages two single pages you need to say <laughs> two pages for me is like in one day two pages like yeah. eight months and then she lose the job. I could do anything to save. The oh, guy passed to another ink. I think the best way uh, to survive in the comics industry is when you say you're going to do something, you should probably do it. Yeah. yeah. yeah like, um, it works. And also, you should probably, I don't know, pay your artists, pay your writers, pay your people. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a good way to foster goodwill. A lot yeah. People they out there do that. They or they'll come. You know, they'll come and they'll say, "Oh, you know, can you do this for me?" Or your rates are too high, um, and then act like you should be doing this for free. And that's not yeah. how it works. Uh, especially if anybody ever said to you, "Your rates are too high," me no. For me, for me, this doesn't work. work. Doesn't work. I don't have a side yeah. job. I live off art, so I need to be get paid. I used to do that. Like mm -hmm. uh, people were like, "Oh, your rates too high," so I'll go down. I'm like, "I'm I'm putting all this work. I'm not going down for nobody." But yeah, there's people like that. There's some people that don't want to pay writers, and there's some people that want to pay artists. And I just don't respond back to them. I'm like, "Okay, I have, I have bills to pay too. Just just like you." I'm like, "I know what it's like. I've I've been, I've been there." But there's a lot of people that don't like to pay writers or artists, and I don't know why they're like that. And mm -hmm. I think that's just pure pure childish. Like nobody. Uh I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that, I don't know, it, it seems really stupid to me at least, is that people don't think they're that hard, which is not true at all. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're just drawing a picture. Oh, you're just writing words down. I can technically do both of those things. But yeah, at the same yeah. time, you didn't put in that time for that level of expertise that comes from, say, Rod's work in art or your work writing in creating, you know, diverse superheroes. And it's it's just something that needs to change because it, it, Rod, Rod can tell you, he probably works like so many hours on any piece of art. And yeah, yeah. you guys... <laughs> That's new, true. And then writers have to work on other things besides just the writing. And the writing takes a long time, too. It's just... Yeah. And would, they have to do their own marketing. Usually they're relegated to being the marketing person slash, yeah. you know, oh. reach out person, etc. So it's like, just pay your people. It's not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like my, my artist, um, Julie, I was on the phone with her for hours while she was inking the page. And I was like, yo, it takes this long. She's like, yeah, I'm like, I would never do this again. And then the next day she called me again. She said, I need motivation. I had to be on the phone with her while she was inking. It was such a long process. I told her I would never become an artist. That's too much. That's too much work. But she's very passionate about it. So I understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, like for, uh, for instance, uh, we have another market that I say for some friends that make only comic books that it gives is this to you, this is speed of work is if you have the opportunity to work with advertising comic, advertising works like storyboards for TV. Mm -hmm. Do it. You have to make like 20 panels in one day like this. Yep. And if you do not deliver it, buy for you. You never get work anymore. You can cry. You can say that your mother died. You never get work. So if you have this opportunity, even for the comic book creators, to work in advertised companies, man, you learn to deliver the thing. You learn to deliver the, and you make heaps of money in advertising, like heaps. 
Like in one storyboard, I can make like one month of payment in comic books that I make in one day, one day of work. I make one month of money. So, so what you're saying is every artist should be a storyboard artist on the side. Would be very, very good. Would be very, very good okay, to, okay. Learn. Nice to learn. I like it. Also, to learn. it begs the question then um, of how you structure your time because i mean you've just said that you're super busy you've got you've got three books going on um and you pump out about two pages per day so how do you structure your time so that you have time to meet all these demands and 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 also work on these things well first of thing i cut i cut social media cut everything i don't have, don't look at facebook anymore just instagram and twitter to share my things and mailing at night, when I'm almost going to sleep, I make my market, so I cut that. I cut Netflix, cut no Netflix, only work. Work, <laughs> lunch, work. <laughs> Netflix is on weekends, Saturday, Sunday, whatever. On the week, Monday to Friday, is only work. I don't blame you. And then I wake up like early, like 6 a.m., mm. and then get a coffee and then I'm on my computer to answer some emails for 30 minutes and then work. So I draw, I draw, I sketch two pages in the morning and then I clean up those pages on the afternoon, beginning of the night. Like oh, you do until, the same thing that Jamie does. Yeah, until, until uh, 8 p.m. And then I go to the gym for not, for, to not die. Of course, <laughs> I go to the gym for an oh, hour. Yeah, I can learn from you, Rod. <laughs> yeah, and then I get back, shower, uh, dinner, and if I, in the will to draw, I draw a little one hour or two. Otherwise, I sleep early. Next day, everything to again. Otherwise, you can't you can't make like three books. You can't make, and I make and sometimes, advertise coming uh, advertise companies call to me and Rod, save me. I have 25 panels of storyboard for tomorrow. <laughs> so I don't do that anymore. I want to work only with comics and say, but I you pay you $5,000. <laughs> All right, <laughs> just send it to my email and no sleep, work, no sleep. Two days without sleep, that's it. Otherwise you don't do it, but you have all Sorry, I was just gonna say it was like Dorfis, you're doing this and you you have three projects out and you have like you know you have a, a child. <laughs> like that's a lot. I got a child. <laughs> you gotta, but, you gotta yeah. stay busy. I get bored, man. Like I'm bored right now because um I have been writing. So I'm like, I'm actually looking at <laughs> my scripts for Nia Kayla, but um I'm actually right. Uh, I wanna keep writing because I don't want my momentum to go away. Like him, three books is a lot for him because he's writing. He got to make sure he draws the perfect camera angles and all that. I don't put camera angles on none of my scripts because I used to do it. I'm like, I rather let the artist, you know, free will. Um, but I think that there's a lot of stories that just being repetitive and I want to do something different. You know, like I'm not trying to copy DC or Marvel. I want to just write the way I want to write. And mm -hmm. I do a lot of research like for my, uh, my Muslim character. I actually talk to my Muslim friends and make sure I write the, this character in a very respectful manner. And it's just, just like my Hawaiian character. Like I have different characters and I want to keep writing and, and I don't want to stop writing at all because, you know, I want to keep pushing out projects. Mm -hmm. And um, I I fell in love with it since, you know, ever since I went in that comic book store with my son. So I'm like, you know, this is something I can do. They've been telling me I'm a good writer for su such a long time. So I'm like, let me let the world read what I can, you know, come up with. Like issue one, I didn't have an editor. So for people to say it was good, I'm like, okay, I wish I had an editor. But now that I have an editor, um, mm -hmm. the the process is much more smoother. So like, yeah, and your your second Kickstarter did ridiculously well compared to yo, the first. I was really yeah. shocked. And I was very, very shocked. <laughs> I didn't know that. Like, uh, I looked at the numbers on accident this morning. I'm just like, oh, so the first one was about $900. I'm just like, oh, yeah, well, nobody yeah. Nobody knew who I was. 
that's cool. And then I and then I look at I look at the current one for issue two. It's just like, oh, it's eight grand. That's fine. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, congratulations, obviously, but I'm just like, that's awesome because uh, we need more representation like that in the medium. And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. I was so blown away. I was like, I'm hitting eight grand. You know, there, there was a lot of people that doubted me. And I was like, it it really pushed me to actually, you know, keep promoting myself. You know, there's a lot of people didn't know about my story. And there's some people that actually read my comment who didn't really know who I was. And, you know, they supported me. And and, and I appreciate it. I'm, that's why I'm going to keep writing. And when they tell me, oh, don't start writing. We need more, you know, women in comics. You know, you know it's, it's mm -hmm. a good cry. You know, like, I went to my first con last year and the type of people that was coming up to me like, oh, keep writing, keep writing. We need more. And I was like, yeah, I can't stop doing this now. I really yeah. can't. So, no, um, I was super hyped when I saw it, the the concepts for your Muslim superhero. Yeah. Uh, I was just like, mm, that costume, I need that. <laughs> it's got a job in it. It's great. I, I create these costumes. I'm like, I want to make sure I create the costumes where it's like uh, feasible for people that's cosplaying because, you know, some of these costumes be hard. And I'm like, these cosplayers, they be going in. I've seen, somebody actually cosplayed my character spirit, and I was so honored. And yeah. I, I just couldn't believe that she actually did that. I was like, wow, man. I had to put her, I could share her on my Instagram. But yeah, the Muslim character, yo, that story, I'm writing with this guy named Art, and he really wanted to jump on it. So I'm actually looking for a Muslim editor, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to look for a Muslim artist as well, too. A lead pencil. So. Uh, I actually might know somebody, weirdly enough. Uh, let Send me talk to you about way. that later. Yeah. Um, anyways. Uh, yeah. So, uh, also, just just not not to take away from you, Dorfies, but uh, Rod's uh, Detective Dead campaign uh, did pretty good, too. <laughs> Uh, I think they got like over two hundred percent funded. So, yeah. Brad, yeah. and you guys are doing Slackerbacker. So, I think Go now, ahead. I think now reach thirty two thousand dollars. I think for uh, I'm trying to get that level. You see, mm -hmm. you've been in the game for tw twenty years. I've been in the game for three years. So, I'm gonna get on your level, sir. Don't worry. We will you, you, oh, yeah, no, I, I believe no, it. No. I believe it. I believe You're it. Not taking away from your achievement, my friend. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just that uh, that they happen to have a better run of it, I guess. So yeah, we, uh, I think the, the like great policy work. And yeah. and I I I think that I think that I think silly when people say, oh, the reader should read this, the reader should like that. No, do your best job on you what you do. If you are a good writer, become the better writer. If you are a good artist, become a better artist. And readers will follow. The readers will follow. If the story is good, you have guys or girls to, to want to read that. And Detective Dad was something like that. We start, and the first campaign, he started the first campaign with no image. And he gets like $1,000. And then he went to the Deviant Art, found me, and went to start to talk. He showed me the, the plot. And I really like the story. I really like the character. I say, oh, this is different. This is something that I want to draw. And then with just those $1,000, he paid me for make like five pages. He pays me and paid me for the inker. And then we did the best we, we can do. And then we released the campaign and he, he markets a lot on Twitter, YouTube. He went to every single place to talk about the project. I, I transformed my Instagram in business account. So I paid to give some boost in our account, in some mm -hmm. posts about Detective Dead, and we get the money, we get the money. Yeah. And now, now I have 18 pages to work. Oh my God. Hey, at least Eight you have five zero. done. Here's your reward. Yeah. More yeah. reward. Here's the war. Bad thing, right? Yeah. Well, so it, of course now I'm wondering then, um, you know, with the comics, how do you how do you choose something that you want to write or work on? And um, it's, and also, uh, do you want to stay in like superheroes for you, Dorfees, or like you know, what kind of genres do you do you gravitate toward? And do you want to work on new things and, and expand your genres? I actually want to expand. I'm um, learning how to. I'm actually reading 
sci-fi, steampunk, and also mm-hmm. horror. Like, I have another horror comic that I've collaborated with two other um, writers, Marcus and Sonny. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, one of the characters is Haitian. The main character is um, Jamaican. And um, there's another character in there. And, and we will be releasing that this year, but uh, we just found an artist. So he's currently working on the pages. Mm-hmm. But I want to, yeah, I do want to branch out to different things because, like, okay, anybody can write a superhero book. Um, yeah. My superhero book, I mostly want to uh, tend to, um, you know, lend towards uh, supernatural and sci-fi. I don't want it too much of a superhero because, you know, it's not something I want to stick to because, you know, superhero books going to sell no matter what. But it's like I want to put different genres within the book. Like I have a children's book I'm coming out with when my son's a superhero. And but I'm putting other genres in, in it, like supernatural or a little horror. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes people want you to mix it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for me too. I I get tired of superhero. I I I have my time on superhero. I drew mm-hmm. a lot for superhero, but now I prefer stories more like uh, Hellboy, that is kind of superhero, but you have horror, yeah. you yeah. have supernatural, sci-fi. Mm-hmm. I like. I I I start to like a lot of cyberpunk thing. Yeah. Yes, um, I like a lot to draw those things. Oh my god, uh, yeah. European comic books, European books. I like mm-hmm. it a lot, so I like to flow in this in this kind of thing. Yeah, uh, not just not just superhero, but yeah, I'm yeah. a professional. If Marvel wants to contract me, give me a <laughs> truck full of money, I will draw any character. So- I don't blame you. To me, uh, just really quick aside, when it comes to me, when uh, to Marvel and DC, I really, I I do like them. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I love a lot of different characters in that universe. I, it's just there's certain works in that uh, that space. Like, for example, like Jeff Lemire's run on Moon Knight or Batwoman with J. H. Williams, for instance. Those comics are something like wholly different from the superhero genre that they're in and they sort of like present it so they're like basically indie ideas yeah so like they're deconstructions of the superhero genre instead of you know just straight up i'm gonna save the day Uh, yeah Yeah. no i i can't get that anymore i don't i don't yeah i don't don't get the wheel to draw something like that that i read the text and say I'm the darkness. <laughs> I'm the that's villain. Cool. I'm the hero. Oh no! That's, me, why when you guys that's it for me. No, too. that's it. Yeah, I want I, to. I I prefer. I I. You know something that I saw on Netflix these days that is the kind of story that I'm having a lot of joy to draw. It was the new animation, robots. What's the name? Robots. Robots. Oh, I'm seeing. Voltron. It's like. No, no, it's a, a sequence of short stories. Oh, um, love, Ro- kill love, Ro- yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. one, Lo- on love, Netflix. love, robots, and something. It's just short stories with a twist in the end of the story. So good, man. So good. So love, cool. death, robots on Netflix. That's what you're referring. Wow. That's one. Yeah. That one. It's amazing, Let's man. It's so amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Animated anthology series on Netflix, um, which kind of you know goes. It's it's red band too, so not safe for yeah for yeah, yeah. 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 yeah yeah something to, to something to check out. And you know, it's so funny because I I personally moved away from telling story or like writing in the superhero genre. I moved away from superhero comics. Um, in general too, just because, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of great stuff. My focus is really on indie stuff. So if you give me something from, you know, independent creators that are, you know, outside of, uh, out of, uh, we just, just a laggy on stream. Yeah. It's a little laggy. Oh, uh, <laughs> you good? Back? Oh, okay. Now it goes. You're back. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's just, um, doing moving away from supers is great but also moving toward indie creators who are doing something different in the genre and that is that's what the focus of the big two and and with this of like that's what great comics are is telling new stories within this within this this medium so thank you guys for doing that and then also just having diverse creators 
Yeah, because you you have a different vision. Yeah, you have yeah, a different, different vision. viewpoints, different cultural backgrounds, different mm -hmm. uh, histories. You know, like you get a different like version of history told you basically in school. Yeah. Like there, there's no way that's not going to create more interesting stuff than just the same stuff that's pumped out every year. Oh, All yeah. the events, everything. It's just like it. A lot of it lacks soul and. Mm -hmm. A lot of it lacks like uh, just having a person or a team of people in it and they're talking about something they care about, something that they're working on that they love and you can see that. And that's ultimately, ultimately more engaging to me than like, you know, War of the Realms or whatever the hell Marvel's doing right now. Um, um, yeah. No, makes perfect sense. And I, I, I wonder like, what are some of the inspirations that, that you know, that helped fuel your work and helped you really, helped you tell these stories? Like, what are your inspirations? My inspirations, uh, I would have to say uh, Gail Simone, um, G. Wilson, um, a lot of indie writers, uh, like uh, Regine Sawyer, uh, uh, I, uh, there's a lot, of, it's, it's a lot of uh, women influence me because mm -hmm. they all, a lot of them push me. Um, because when I first started off, I didn't get that support system. I was like, oh, your 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 book is not going to make it, this and that. Oh, oh, I used to hear all of that. And then I'm in two books and they still haven't dropped a book. But, you know, I had to throw that little shade in there. But it's like, <laughs> it's like you know, like people that actually believes in you is what pushed me. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what influenced me as a character, uh, one of the characters actually influenced me the most was Raven from DC Comics because her mm -hmm. backstory was so dark and it was just so eccentric. So yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to create a character like that. Like, it's so... I love Raven. Yeah, like, it, you just read her backstory, you're like, oh my gosh, she went through all of this and she's still going through all the, still the, 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 the BS. you like, wow. Mm -hmm. like, so it was like, she's one of my favorite characters. She's not like the normal superhero, you know? Nope. So I wanted my character spirit to be just like her. She going through trials and tribulations. I want my character to be the same way. So I get a lot of inspiration from her books and her backstory, as well as Rogue, because Rogue is like similar like to uh, Raven. So those yeah. two characters right there really put me at a, a peak. At like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wanted, I want all my characters, what, what, no matter what genre, to be very abnormal, to be in their type of level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Then the dark backstory, like I definitely connect with that. Every character that I seem to write always has, you know, sort of something that they're working through that manifests itself, you know, mm -hmm. in their current situation or their their own personal traumas and their own darkness comes, um, starts to influence their reactions in or has influenced their reactions in certain realms and certain worlds. So like with Nightmare, um, you know, my character was like, you know, really dealing with in real time, her trauma and tragedy and that influencing multiple worlds and multiple realities. And then her having to confront the, the monster that she's created, um, from her own trauma and from her pain. So those kinds of dark backstories are like that, that gravity, that's what I gravitate towards. That's what I want to see. And that's oh, what I by the way, by the way, don't want to interrupt, but uh, there is a review of Spirits, Destiny, and Nightmare in the first episode in the Academy. Saw the plug. Anyways. <laughs> I watched it. Plug. <laughs> I, was really I, was like it. Worry. I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. But Rod, like, what are some of the inspirations that help you, like, or that that got you where you are, and that you can that we can see in in your work now? Well, in in comics, I like those uh, mainly. I like the Mark Miller ones. I like Great Morrison, Great Morrison. Oh yeah, uh, Great Morrison. Murph. This is very good. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Murph. This is also. This is kind of story. That I like, like wheeling like, your books is like my bookshelf. Did you have them just ready, or did you go get them? <laughs> it's right here, just ready, full of full of comic books. That is and I like I, I like to to watch it right now. I I start to write some some of my own comics, and it's very hard. Like it took me yeah. five months to write ten pages. I say, oh my god, this is 
terrible. Yeah. And I, 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 re I read, I read a like of uh, lots of uh, physics, quantic books or history, Egyptian history, not just comics, you know, because I, yeah. I, I I'm afraid to get too near to these books. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to research outside of the book of the comic mm -hmm. books. So mm -hmm. a lot of movies, animation, oh, yeah. uh, historic books. Uh, so that this is uh, even life dreams sometimes the stories are coming from me from from dream that i think is my subconscious getting all together in putting in my face the stories yeah so the, i'm having a lot of fun of writing right now i hope if i have time and i don't die until there to publish my comic books by the end of the year awesome. in a new campaign in indiegogo and it will be it will be almost like the Netflix anthology stories, very short stories, five or six pages with a twist in the end. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mainly mainly those things, mainly those direction. No, definitely. And, you, got, you got good taste there, Rod. I'll I'll tell you that. And uh, <laughs> Dorfis, or Dorfis, sorry, <laughs> Dorfis, you have a wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Superhero picks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Raven mm -hmm. and Raven and Rogue are two of my favorites. Yes, sure. I love them because. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually uh, not to go back to Jeff Lemire, but I actually really liked what he did with her in uh, Earth One because he made her like uh, Native American, and that was really cool. I thought that was a really interesting take on the character. Uh, she like turned into a flock of crows instead of like you know the regular like bird form or whatever so mm -hmm. i like the fact they had released her own book i was like oh my gosh yeah also that i need to get on that um awesome well we're uh we're about out of time uh, is there anything else we need to cover real quick um okay how about this how about this because we like to end it on like a little a little weirdo note so uh, so just to for oh, the people to i have a good idea i have a good idea okay so okay, we, we all concert. stay naked and start to dance oh, <laughs> on the TV. All right, one, two, three, go. Are you starting us off, Rod? Yeah, yeah, it's off. Um, um, yeah, we're we're having a secret con or a secret giveaway um, right now. Yeah, we're having a secret giveaway, part of the mega giveaway that I talked about before. So. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is go to that post, which will be in the description after we're done, uh, and comment on what you think I think is the best rom-com movie in the universe. And if you're right, you'll get entered to win. What we think you think is the best rom-com in the universe. Yes. Rom what does Jake West think is the best rom-com in the universe, I think is the exact question. See, I... I already have some ideas, so I'll put them on. I can't technically win because, I mean, we no, do this can. together. Yeah, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair, it's not but, fair. but okay. I'll, I'll let him. I guess I'll get some If gets it the first week, I will be giving a hint uh, next week. So. I wanna, you know what? If you follow me, I will drop hints. If you really want it, I will drop some hints. So follow me. I will drop hints. Get to then you can get in the giveaway, and I give really good hints. Actually, you know what? I like that secrety secrety thing. Yeah, you have to go there to get the hints. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um. All right. So we're doing. We're almost out of time, but I want to do something fun. I want to know what you guys are personally just what you're personally into. But I'm gonna I'm gonna move away from comics, right? Because we already know what your inspirations are there. What was the last? What was the last? album that you played like, uh, or like music that you played that you were into i like a lot of leon Gallagher from oasis the okay. last album of him i like a lot of his music really rock, and, rock and roll baby well <laughs> the last thing i listened to was city girls twerk so that's kind of me and my son's favorite song right now it's up right. yeah, when i be writing um scripts Oh, uh, is that what you guys listen to while you're while you're working? For yeah. sure, for sure. Uh, I right. a lot. All right, so we got it, we got it. So we've got Oasis, Oasis, always. And we've got City Girls. So yes. I'm 
I mean, this different, very different situations, but it, definitely check them out. Listen to them while you're reading their work and get some, you know, get a feel of what they're into while they're doing it. You can probably hear the beat and the rhythm while For you're sure. reading them. For sure. Um, Make a comic creator's music playlist at some point, I'm we sure. We should, we should. Now, um, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, Good conversation, also, too. Rod, again, thank you for those art pages. They were amazing. Yeah. Um, count on me. Count on me. Like that. So it was a really cool experience. Like, yeah. I never seen them in person. So yeah. I, no, I had no idea they were going to be like poster signings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was great. A quick announcement nice. too. Um, we are so we are doing WonderCon next week. Um, Jake and I, and okay. we are going to be doing some very cool shots. We're going to be talking to some really cool people. Join us on Instagram Live. You can follow Comics Academy um, or Maleficent or Melissafent. I don't even know my own Twitter handle. Jesus. Uh, Comics Academy X, which is Twitter and Instagram. And at, <laughs> at, uh, on Instagram, so and we will have some live videos. We'll have some some sweet merch and swag that we're picking up, and we're going to send away and give away to all of our. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you also have questions for Rod or for Dorfis, you know you can follow them too. Their links are going to be in the bio. The links to all their work, the links to their social media, so that you can follow them. Love also, them. Rod has a YouTube channel where he does art. So yes. He wants to do his art process, and it's dope Get as hell. Get some. Yes. YouTube channel. I will yeah. be one million followers. That's all you have to do. Yeah. And then you're no, there. I, 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 I would like to thank you, both of you, and uh, I hope this friendship goes further. Oh, oh, you, be, you believe it. We're yeah. talking about it. What are you talking about? We're already we talk, we talk about it. You're talking. I mean, think the audience can see the machinations rolling. The, cog, the cogs are starting to. Cogs are turning. Yeah, <laughs> cogs are turning. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being on the show. Thank everybody for watching yet again. Uh, I know Dean was in the chat again. I don't know where the hell he went, though. Um, <laughs> we miss you, sweet Jeffrey. And thank you again, Comics Academy, out. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.